my sister Scrapper. I have a tutorial for you today. I want to share with you how I created my vertical toilet paper mini albums. I've had several people ask um, me to show them how I do the cover and um, the binding. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So what you need for this, this is one that I did at Easter time. Um, it's got six toilet paper rolls in it and then um, a chipboard cover and a chipboard binding. So for the supplies, you will need, obviously, six toilet paper rolls. And um, as you know, toilet paper rolls are not all the same. They're all different sizes. And so the measurements I am going to give you are going to be the ones that are going to fit my toilet paper rolls. So you'll just need to make sure, and if you have to tweak the measurements just a little bit, make sure that you measure your toilet paper rolls first. Um, I'm going to show you the way that I cover my toilet paper rolls. So you need six toilet paper rolls. You need some patterned paper. And I like to use, uh, I'm going to use this craft cardstock. Um, big stack of paper that I got from Hobby Lobby um, for this particular video. And you'll need some um, cardstock, plain cardstock for your tags for the inside of your toilet paper roll. You will need um, some patterned paper to cover your chipboard. You'll need um, a piece of 12 by 12 chipboard. You won't use the whole thing, but um, a 12 by 12 would work really well. So let's get started. The first thing I like to do is take my toilet paper rolls and um, flatten them out as best you can. What I like to do to get mine really, really flat like this is I take them and I run them through my big shot a couple of times. And then they will end up... It usually works pretty good. And um, there's several ways to cover your toilet paper rolls. You can, um, and I've kind of experimented with a couple of different ways. And the way I'm going to show you is how I like to do it the best. But that's just my own personal opinion. You can, you have the option of painting the outside rims of your toilet paper rolls. Um, but I've tried that and I just don't like the raggy. It still to me looks ragged. It looks like a toilet paper roll. So what I like to do is I like to cut my paper either solid cardstock, which is like what I did on this one. I used white cardstock to cover my toilet paper rolls and then I matted um, with my design paper because I actually used some scraps. So you can actually use scraps to um, to create this as well as long as you use solid pattern or solid cardstock to cover your toilet paper rolls and then use your pattern paper just to um, create mats on each one of them. So, but what I'm going to do for this one today is I'm going to just go ahead and use my full pattern paper and um, wrap my toilet paper rolls. So what I like to do is I like to use my APG gun for some of my adhesive. I like to use a wet glue and I also love to use score tape. Um, and I use the quarter inch size. So what I do is after I've got all of my toilet paper rolls flattened, I take my design paper or my so solid cardstock and you need six toilet paper rolls and your um, paper to wrap your toilet paper rolls. And again, these are the measurements, measurements for my toilet paper rolls. Is you want to cut your paper at four and a half inches by six inches. So it's four and a half this way and six inches this way. And you're going to lay it on your scoreboard with the six inch side up here. And you're going to score at two and three quarters. And then you're going to score again at five and a half. Let me show you on this side. That way it's a little bit, probably better to see. So you're going to score again at two and three quarters and five and a half. And then go ahead and fold on your score marks. And I would use my bone folder to make it really crease, but I've already got these already pre-folded. And then what I do is I take my toilet paper roll and I cover it with some ATG. It doesn't matter if you still got toilet paper on there. It's going to be covered anyway. So, And I go ahead and I line it up with my little half inch crease there for score mark. And then I fold it over like this. And press it down really good so you get a good adhesion. And then I take my score tape. I like to use score tape for this. And I run a piece of score tape as close to the folded edge and then take my APG gun again and cover this side and one close to the edge right here fold this down 
and remove the backing from your score tape or your red line tape or whatever tape you prefer to use. This is just what I like to use. And fold it over. So there's your first one covered. And I like to do my seam. I've seen where some people wrap it and they have a seam in the back. I just personally don't like that look, so I try to do it on the side. So that's your toilet paper roll. There's your first one. So go ahead and we're going to cover six more of these. And I have mine already cut. Again, I put my, um, my ATG on the toilet paper roll first. I line it up with my half inch score mark and stick it down and then add my piece of score tape as close to the edge as possible. And you can put your um, ATG on the toilet paper roll, or you can put it on the paper, whatever works. We're just gonna, I think you don't have to do this part, just glue down. Remove the backing from the score tape and stick it down. There's our second one. So just continue to go ahead and cover all six of your toilet paper rolls. So you should have six of them covered. So for the video, I'm just going to cover the two. So those are your six toilet paper rolls. And because this is going to be a vertical um, toilet paper roll mini, make sure that your design is running up and down. instead of. So when you cut your design paper, your four and a half inches is the height of your toilet paper rolls or whatever your particular toilet paper rolls are. So um, just make sure that you cut, if you do have a pattern on your paper, that it's um, running the right direction and not upside down or the wrong way, like the chandeliers <laughs> right here. Make sure they're running up and down instead of the other way. So that's how I cover my toilet paper rolls. If I was going to use just solid cardstock like I did on this particular one, again, I would cut my little pieces of cardstock to four and a half by six score it at two and three quarters and again at five and a half wrap my toilet paper roll so they would end up being solid white and then i would take my pattern paper like i said i used scraps to create this and just cut uh, little mats to put on the front and backs of these that's how i did that one but for this one i'm just using my design paper to wrap the whole thing in because of the color scheme i'm using so the next thing we're going to create once you get your toilet paper rolls covered i like to go ahead and cover them all first and then I make my chipboard cover. And my chipboard cover is um, one long piece like this. Um, and I have the measurements that I, I, um, that I use to create this particular one. I do make my cover just a little bit wider than um, my toilet paper rolls. And I do allow um, a little bit more height because I want my, I will have tags in here. And I don't want it to um, be too, I want to need, leave enough room in there for my tags that go inside my toilet paper roll. So as you can see right there, I have a pretty good gap right there. So the measurements I'm going to give you again are the measurements for my particular toilet paper rolls that are um, this dimension, which is almost two and three quarter, almost three. Two and three quarters basically is what they are. So... For your chipboard, you're going to cut your chipboard. It's going to be, you need two pieces that are three inches by five and a half inches. So we have two that size. Again, that's three inches this way by five and a half this way. Three inches by five and a half. You need two of those. That's going to be your front and your back cover. For the top and the bottom of the cover, you need... Um, two pieces that are three inches high by one and three quarter inches wide. So again, three inches, so it matches up with what we just cut by one and three quarters wide. And then you need one piece, which is this piece right here, which is your fold over flap. And I just kind of guesstimated on that as far as how long I wanted it. You can shorten it or lengthen it however you want. This is just the dimensions that I used. 
That piece is three inches this way by two and a half, and we need one piece for that. So what I like to do with that, once I get my pieces cut, is I take a pen and I label them so I don't get confused because they have to be a particular order when you lay them out. So one of your three inches by five and a half inches is going to be your front. So I lay it out in front of me like this. So you're gonna need your front piece. Then we need our bottom piece, which is your three inch by one and three quarter inch. Then you need your back piece, which is three inches by one in, by five and a half inches, which is the same as our top piece. Then you need, I mean, as far as our front piece, and then you need your top piece, which is three inches by one and three quarter inches. And then you need the fold over flap. It's the last piece you lay out here on the end. And that's three inches by two and a half inches. So I like to lay it out in front of me and um, what I want to do is I want to cover the whole entire thing. Now you can again use pattern paper if it's an all over design or you can do like I did on this and use solid, a solid color cardstock and then make little mats to mat each one of your pieces like I did on here. I used um, a piece here for the front, I used a separate piece for the flap, a separate piece for the top, a separate piece for the back and then I just left the bottom since no one's really going to see it plain. But what I'm going to do for this one that I'm showing you today is I'm going to use my design paper and this is what I picked out um, to cover my chipboard. When you cover your chipboard um, you will need two pieces because um, you'll have to um, piece it together to make one long strip to cover this whole entire section because this is obviously longer than 12 inches. So what I did to cover um, my chipboard is I cut my piece four and three quarter inches wide and it's the full 12 inches. So when I, what I like to do is use my score tape again and I'm just gonna set this up here out of the way really quick. And I'm gonna take my score tape, hopefully you can see this on the black, and I'm gonna run like three strips of score tape on here. And for this particular piece, you really want to use a really strong adhesive, whether it be your red line tape or score tape, um, something that's really going to stick, because this is going to be your cover and you want to make sure that it sticks. Give that a good adhesion. Go ahead and take the backing off. I don't have any fingernails, so I have to use my craft knife. And take your second piece that again is cut at four and three quarters inches wide by the full 12 inches. And go ahead and I'm going to stand up because I need to make sure I line this up here. Make sure your top and your bottoms are even. And stick it down. Give it a good burnish to make sure that the tape really sticks. So then you should have one long piece like this. So this is my outside and this is my inside. Then what I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to lay my pieces out. Now when we now we're going to wrap our chipboard and what you want to do when you wrap your chipboard, and I'm sure if you've not wrapped chipboard before, or if you have, this might be repetitive, but I just want to make sure everybody understands. You need to leave um, a space in between your pieces, so that way when you fold up your chipboard like this, um, it'll fold. Because if you butt it right up against each other, it won't go anywhere. So you need to leave a little space in between. What I like to do is um, take the chip, just a scrap piece of chipboard that I've cut my pieces from, and I use two widths, two pieces, and that's kind of what I use as a spacer in between my pieces. So I lay my first piece down, and then I use my little shim to go in between these, and then I put my next piece down. So that leaves me roughly about an eighth of an inch or a little bit more, but I just use two pieces of scrap chipboard held together as my shim to go in between my pieces. So what I like to do, how I like to do this is, um, 
again, I like to use score tape because this is the, I mean, I'm covering my chipboard and I want to make sure it sticks really well. I take my, um, my first piece, which is my front, and again, the front's cut at three inches by five and a half inches, and go ahead and line the perimeter of my chipboard with the score tape. All the four corners all the way around because we want to make sure that the, it's going to stick really well and then I just run uh, a couple down the center like this and again burnish my, my tape so it's going to stick really well and go ahead When you cover your chipboard, you want to allow, so you have it, because we're going to fold it over and wrap our chipboard, so you want to make sure you allow at least three, de three quarters of an inch or an inch on the top and the bottom and also on, this, on the sides. Just so that way it'll fold over and look a little more professional looking. Or at least try to look professional looking. So, here's the first piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave about um, a little ruler here, and I just I just use my ruler just to get um, on the first piece just to get a good um, way to lay it down. I'm going to use three quarters of an inch because I think that's what I allowed on my top and my bottom, just so I make sure and get it straight. So I'll put that right there. Stick it down. So there's our front piece. So the next piece we want to put is the bottom piece. And again, go ahead and wrap the perimeter with the score tape. And right here. And on this side. And over here. And over here. And we'll just, since it's a small piece, we'll just do one in the middle. And burnish the tape so it's going to stick on here. This is not working. I should have grabbed my bone holder. Oh, well. Take off the tape backing. And you can use this kind of uh, chipboard piece. There's my bone folder. Um, you can make this cover for any other mini album you want to use. I use this type of cover all the time. It works really well because it actually looks like a book. That's why I think I like it. It's my new favorite. So then I take my little two pieces of scrap chipboard that I have and I set them along here. And again, I'm going to stand up to make sure that I get this even. Because you want to make sure that your pieces are even, otherwise it's going to look funny. It's going to be crooked. So hopefully my head's not in the way. I'm going to line it up like this. And stick it down. So as you can see right here, this is the gap that we left in between our chipboard. So the next piece, you're just going to go ahead and add the rest of your pieces to your to your cardstock or your design paper, whichever you're using. The next piece is going to be the back. Take my little gem. Set it in there and line it up so both pieces, so I get my gap in between my next piece, which is my bottom, and then this is the back. And I'm going to line it up there, make sure I have it straight, and stick it down. And burnish it really good. Okay, next piece we're going to put down is the top of our cover.
jam here. I'm gonna slide this down just so I can see a little bit better. Put my little pieces in there. Take my top piece. Line it up and stick it down. And our last piece of chipboard is the little flap. Take my little shim here. Line it up on there. Take my flap piece. And stick it down. So then what we have is this excess and we'll go ahead and trim that off. Leave about an, uh, an inch, three quarters of an inch here and then just trim the rest of it off. So this is what it should look like right here should have your front, your bottom, the back, the top, and the flap, and you should have a little gap in between each piece of chipboard. So once we get our chipboard all laid down, what I like to do um, is go ahead and trim my corners off, um, which is miter in your corners. So what you want to do, you can use a ruler and measure it. I basically just eyeball it. What you want to do is you want to trim your corners off on an angle and leave about an eighth of an inch between um, if you have this little ruler it's really nice because it's the first little you just put that on your little corner and you can either draw a pencil line you can use your craft knife um, and just trim it with your craft knife or you can just eyeball it which is my choice and sometimes it works really well I, and sometimes you know not so much but so you're just going to cut it off at an angle like this on all four corners doesn't have to be perfect because again we're going to wrap our chipboard but again make sure you leave at least an eighth of an inch from there so after we get that done then again we need the score tape out because I like score tape and we are making a cover so we want to make sure it sticks really well what I like to do is I like to put a score tape all around the perimeter on the outside of my paper and then on the perimeter of my chipboard okay so it should look like this you should have tape on all four sides again I like to take my um, my bone folder and just burnish my tape okay then I like to take my bone folder just um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the chipboard what I like to do before I go ahead and fold over my edges I like to take my bone folder and just run it along the edge and hopefully I didn't bump the camera too bad of my chipboard. What I like to do is I like to take it and I like to just kind of fold it, sit it on the table and kind of rock it up like this to get the fold started. And I start in the center and just press it down. Just like that. And take your bone folder and give it a good burnish. And you're probably wondering what about this stuff in the middle? Well, we're going to take care of that as soon as we get the whole thing covered. Then flip it around to the other side. Now we're going to miter our corners. And this just takes practice. Sometimes I do it and it's fabulous and other times not so much. So what I like to do is first off take up my tape from my um, piece of chipboard. Make sure the corners are stuck. Take the backing off the score tape on the short end. And then I like to take my bone folder and this little corner here just kind of fold it, fold it in like this on both sides like this. So it's folded in. Again, fold it up, rock it up like that and fold it down. And then you should have a really nice, fabulous corner. And actually those turned out pretty good. So it should look like this. Nice and pretty. And again, there's times when I cut it too close and I have a gap, but it's no big deal because we are going to line it. It's just practice. Some, like I said, sometimes mine turns out fabulous, sometimes mm, not so much. But it's important to leave that one eighth of an inch there. 
before you trim, I mean, when you trim it off. So we'll do the other side. So there we have it. We have our chipboard all wrapped. Our front, our bottom, our back, our top, and our flat. So then take your bone folder and just go ahead and do a good burnish along the inside edges, around the perimeter, and flip it over and burnish the top portion. Now, for these little um, spaces we have, what I like to do is take my bone folder and just gently start my crease. So there's my front piece. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do flip it over so I can do my, my back piece. And again, we have tape on there, so it should stick pretty good. And then fold it up like this. And work it pretty good because you really want it to be pretty flexible. And just work it so you can fold it so it doesn't, and do it kind of slow so that way you don't tear your, your paper. And there we have it. There is our fabulous little cover. So that's our cover and what we're going to do is we're going to create our hinge and put our toilet paper rolls on the inside. I know, how cute. There you go. Isn't that fabulous?